What are you doing here? Come on. You're great. Talk to Robin. She's, a, she's the public access TV so, person. All right, cool. All right, tell me who you are. My name's Mary Nitton, and um, I'm a resident of Charlottesville, Virginia. Then, then, then what are you doing here right now? Be Trying to demonstrate my uh, right to assemble oh, yes. and disagree okay, with the ruling like. yeah. from the Supreme Court. And uh, hopefully yeah, they're from our, um, demonstrate to our state events, government so that we want to keep abortion coming. safe and legal and that women <laughs> have you? a right to it and that you have uh, awful things happen to a society when you regulate uh, reproductive rights. Do you know that for a fact? Well, there's scientific data that shows that. But what about why was Roe in the first place brought up in, in the federal court? I have read various things about the whole sort of Roe versus Way, it's, its viability as the case law. Don't want to get into that. Only care about one thing, that women have access. I'm not a constitutional attorney. But see, you're, you're, you're narrowing in on one part of it. I'm saying it's a much bigger picture. You're, you're, every piece needs to be told, but we shouldn't be rehashing this. This was set law. So I don't care about Roe versus Wade. I care about right now women's rights and men's rights right now. Yes. Well, um, my womb is retired, so, but I'm here for all the women, for, it isn't just women who are going to suffer, it's women and their families and the children that they can't afford or don't want. It's, uh, it's not even just abortion, it's health care. And it's not only just health care, it's what comes next. I mean, we already we just had a Supreme Court justice say, how about let's take away birth control? You know, so when this all, when this all was leaked, right before it was leaked, someone sent me a picture of these women sitting around a table in front of the yes, university. They are. It was from the 60s, and they were in short dresses, and they were, had books out, and they were just normal women at a normal university. And that picture was from Afghanistan. And so when I see what's happening right now in the Supreme Court and in America, I think about that picture of those young women in Afghanistan and I think, okay, is this the University of, is this, could this be picture be taken in front of the University of Virginia today, sent to somewhere who looks at us as a country literally of women in red robes. And it breaks my heart that I have to be here. And it's terrifying. But if it hadn't been for women who did this before me, I wouldn't be here today. So that's kind of why I'm here. It's not, it's not, a, it's not an imperial ruling it's actually supposed to be the voice of the people and exactly it's, it's not and it's, and it's you are exactly right robin and thank you for being here thank you so much and thank you for doing what you're doing and you make me have hope <laughs> thank you you make thank me you. have hope thank you all right i'm going to grab a sign What did you learn about birth control in eighth grade? Abstinence. That was it. That was it. That was absolutely even, it. In your in your time, did they bring the banana with a condom? No. Yeah. So kind of the same thing for me. I um, came from Richmond, and uh, kind of like in the West End and Rico area. And yeah, it was pretty much abstinence only. They didn't have the banana, like you said. Banana condom. You can say that because it's illegal. <laughs> yeah. Nope. No contraceptives, really. It was just kind of abstinence, kind of scare tactics. You with. Get, I'm sorry. Are, are you? What are you pregnant? Uh, I'm heat slash him. 
Okay, so does that mean that you could impregnate someone? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. See, yeah. see how I work? <laughs> how come everybody else in the courtroom or whatever doesn't work? Huh? What is going on? Yeah. Like, how do people just stay completely oblivious to the fact that we're human beings, we have needs, and we'd like to know how to express ourselves properly? Yeah, and I think, like, one of the scariest things is that one of the other judges is hinted at repealing some of the other due process um, cases that involve same-sex marriage, uh, contraceptives, et cetera, other okay. privacy stuff. I'm sorry again, how old, how young are you? I'm 20, I'll be 21 this summer. 20 years old, and a 50-year-old, 60-year-old federal court uh, judge doesn't know what you know? Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. Like, what is that possible? Well, hey, I didn't vote him in, so it doesn't really matter. Did you go to school for, like, like, did you go to college when you were 16? How do you know what this is? Well, I don't know, probably the internet. I guess they didn't have that, huh? And also, how frustrating it is for a young person, right? You want a country that you believe in, that's free and democratic, it's got democracy in it, in its every day. It's the only country in the world, supposedly, that we can have um, a, a voice. And yet, what happened? Well, that's clearly not the case. If we don't get the power to elect our court judges or a lot of the other people that are making the decisions behind the scenes, then, you know, I'll let you, I'll let you decide what that means. <laughs> I wish I didn't. I know. You know who I am, Robin yeah. Hoffman? Yeah. yeah. We, we talked the other day. I was supposed to do something, but yeah. and, and I thought everything was going to be fine yesterday. Now, yeah. it's a great, you know. Hey, I can't tell you how disappointed I am to actually have to wear this. I know. Why did you dress up as handmade and still? Because that's what the Republicans are doing to us. They are taking away individual rights, and do not be confused and think that abortion is where it will stop. Alito and Thomas and their decisions today made very clear that they want to go after all of the rights that we have come to expect. Birth control freedom, gay rights, marriage equality. All of our privacy rights are at risk now, and we must send people to both Washington and Richmond who are going to ensure protections for individual liberties. And this was the best way to get the message across because this is where they're sending us. Uh, first, just go ahead and say and spell your name, and then you're on the Board of Supervisors, correct? Donna Price, Chair of the Albemarle County Board of Supervisors and a candidate for the House of Delegates 55th District. Perfect. So, Donna, how are you feeling today? I'm, I feel horrible. I mean, I, we knew this was coming, but emotions are not real. They're not stable yet because, just as we expected, this decision not only goes after a woman's right to choose, it goes after the rights to birth control, it goes after marriage equality, it goes after equal protection for gay and lesbian individuals in the workplace. It goes after private consensual sexual conduct between adults. So we're looking at everything from Griswold versus Connecticut, Lawrence v. Texas, Loving versus Virginia, um, Bostock versus Clayton County, Obergefell versus Hodges. Every one of those rights that we have fought hard to obtain are all at risk by this reactionary, right-wing, conservative Supreme Court that has no legitimacy after Mitch McConnell denied Barack Obama his um, Supreme Court nominee, and then we've got Trump has put the other, all three of these people on there who lied during their confirmation hearings. They all said that 
that um, Roe v. Wade was settled law, but first chance they get, they overturn it. We have got to fight. We've got to send people to Washington and Richmond who are going to take care of individual liberties. Yeah, so uh, what is your goal for a gathering today? It's to get people energized. Right now, people are thinking short term. They're looking at inflation and they're looking at you know, gas and things like that, which are important, don't get me wrong. But you gotta look at the long game. You gotta look at the end game. The end game is individual liberties. And the same things that we're dealing with economically are happening all over the world. But this is America, and these, the same people who say they're pro-life oppose reasonable gun regulations. I mean, it's part and parcel. If you believe all life is sacred, then you've got to protect all life, and that includes reasonable gun safety. But they're still opposed to that. What just passed in the Congress is something, but it's nowhere near where it should be. Yeah, that's really good. Um, just tell me a little more about your reaction when you heard today. You know, we all have been expecting it, but even when you expect it, you can't really respond adequately to it because the reality is much worse than the anticipation. Yeah. What does it say about our nation and our government that we are back here uh, with bans on women's bodies? I think we're going into the dark ages. When we look at what's happening now, we are moving the United States back into a privileged area where only the few have rights and the rest of us have nothing but burdens. And this is something that we cannot stand. America, you need to get out and vote. You need to send people to Congress and to Richmond who are going to protect your individual liberties. That's perfect. Donna, is there anything else you want to say? This is only the beginning. It is not the end. And I can't believe we're still fighting this crap. Um, I was around when no abortion wasn't safe and legal, so I know how horrible it can be, and so I can't believe that my daughter has fewer rights than I had. I mean, we've gone back 50 years, we're going back in time, and now Youngkin has announced he's going to change the, wants to change the rules in Virginia to make it even worse here, so um, we just have a lot of work to do, so I just want to make sure everybody knows there are a lot of us out here, and um, the chant for today is keep your rosaries off my ovaries. <laughs> fighting, I guess, for a world where my daughter will have some bodily autonomy. I can't believe that she's going to grow up without this as a fundamental human right. It's just disgusting. I never would have believed that this could happen here. I mean... And your baby is gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. or I wouldn't have been the president of Charlottesville now since the 80s, right? And we have seen great progress. Sometimes it's slow. But when the public understands, the leaders usually follow. And I think this is one of those issues. Right now, the Equal Rights Amendment was ratified. Three quarters of the state when Virginia did it in 2020, it became effective January 27, 2022. It is. Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution is met, and they're ignoring it. They're making excuses. Something in a preamble that states did not ratify does not count. And I do not believe we would be standing here today if the 28th Amendment had been certified, published, and recognized on the 27th of 2022. This is just wrong, right? It's just wrong. And states cannot resent a ratification. That is a final thing in the legal system. That's when it's done. It's done. Because we know with prohibition, you go all the way through Article 5. If you don't like it, you go all the way back through Article 5. If they want to have a preamble hold, then they need to go all the way through Article 5 and get that to be done. Right now, we're asking the senators to please pass a law that will clarify that there is no time limit on equality. There can be no time limit on the basic rights, we can, this is like I'm told that this may be the first time that a citizens in America have had rights taken away from them. And to think we're going back to 1868 
when the Amendment 14 was passed. I understand amendment process is messy, but when the public understands, you know, then the leaders will follow. And we all need to speak out and say the Equal Rights Amendment, equal rights under the law, it is already ratified. And this taking away of our right of privacy is atrocious. And people, men, women, we all have a lot to fear. Where do they think they're going to stop when you have a minority of six dictating to a majority? When I ask people and when you do surveys, nine out of ten people believe in equality in this country. Two-thirds to three-quarters I believe in a right of your body autonomy. I'm not even talking just reproduction. Do you understand? It's, it, it really is up to individuals and for them to make choices for their families. And I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm speechless at points. But I am out here, and so are all these other people. They're taking action. They care, and they'll be out helping candidates get elected and making a difference in our upcoming November elections. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. No, I'm old enough that we had the little um, movie for the girls and the movie for the boys, and they weren't the same because we talked about it. Um, so when my kids had that in like fifth grade, uh, my daughter goes, you stayed too long, you went to both, didn't you? And I did, and they still weren't the same. You know, we put the burden on the women, and now we take away their authority? Give me a break. How does that fare? I, do you think I wasn't uncomfortable? I was uncomfortable. But I promised myself, because my mother was honest with me, that I would always be honest with my kids, and I would tell them the truth until they told me, no, Mom, you can be quiet now. I don't want to hear anymore. But they both called me up in college and thanked them. Thank you, Mom, for giving me a clue of what really goes on in life. That keeps me safe. That lets me know what I have a right to do. Federal judges want to suppress education, want to suppress people's knowledge and choices, and it's ridiculous. We need to have accurate information to make good decisions, no matter what our age is. And historically, when a society starts to take away rights, they take it away from women. And then they start taking it away, bits and chunks, from everybody else. So beware, and stand up, and act, and find who you think, do your research, who you think is the best candidate, Go put in your elbow grease, go put in your money, and make a difference, because we have an election coming up in November, and it matters. It matters. We are so close in the Virginia legislature. Right now, we are, have rights in this state, but we are very close from not having them. Right? It's, it's hard to believe because I think we knew it was coming, but to see it, I, like when I saw the New York Times headline, Roe v. Wade overturned, and then underneath that, the map of the states that have already done total bans, it's, um, it's pretty chilling because it's, it makes you think what else is to come because it's, it's just taking away a very fundamental right of autonomy for probably like half the half the states in this country in the next couple months I, I don't know you know I think we all just have to collectively use whatever skills and voice we have to try to build a movement to make this a better city state country and it's a collective effort each of us plays a small role but we have to come together and you never know the small thing you do what long-term permanent impact it could have that you could never even see or know and so it's just I think it's just about that collective movement um, and it's no I think I do I think um, I, 
I love the, this country and the people in it and want to see better. And I think we need we need more patriots like John Brown in our history. So <laughs> the the other really important thing is the next state elections in Virginia are going to be critical because we are one state senator away from Virginia having a total ban on abortion. Democrats control the state senate by one vote. And if that changes, Governor Youngkin has already said he wants to move to ban abortion in Virginia. Not immediately. Um, they'll be coming up in the next year, but state-level elections are going to be happening. Um, you know, uh, you know, the next year or so, really gearing up for them. And yeah, a lot of people. The turnout is usually low. A lot of people aren't aware their who their state senator even is. Um, yeah, it's it's. Um, an election to decide who the candidate will be in each party. And in some ways, they're, they're often sometimes the most important election because it really determines what the candidate stands for. I think it's where the most policy and ideological debates happen. And they're critical for the future of who represents us and what our politics is going to be. And as long as we allow primaries to go and contest in, you have corporate controlled candidates, um, we're going to have a broken political system and we'll get bad candidates who can't win. So. I think the big thing is, is to just don't be afraid to make your voice heard. Don't be afraid to not know everything. I think a lot of people feel like they don't want to get involved or speak or speak at a public city council meeting because they feel like, oh, I don't really understand all the issues. But, um, you know, every, every... Yeah, and I think especially at a local level, you know, your voice actually really does make a difference. And even if you have an idea, but you don't know all the details exactly how it works, that idea can lead to something. And it's all about just making yourself, putting yourself out there to connect with other people. And, um, and um, yeah, I mean, even if you feel like you don't know everything and you don't know that you don't even know who your city councilors are, if you speak at a city council meeting and you have an idea, I mean, your voice will, will make a difference. And that's, that's how you start getting involved. Of course. So I am here protesting with my daughter and using our First Amendment rights to freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. And the reason I am here today is to protest against the decision that was made in the Dobbs case today, overturning Roe versus Wade. And the reason I find this important is because of something called precedent. Precedent is what all future Supreme Court cases are going to be based on. So in this particular case, um, Roe versus Wade and the right to abortion was based on the right to privacy and getting rid of this sort of of getting, getting rid of the right to an abortion also challenges your right to privacy, challenges people's right to birth control, potentially. It could also potentially have effects on same-sex marriage um, and same-sex relationships. And so it is important that we all are following along with what's going on in the Supreme Court so you can go out there and fight for what you believe is right. During confirmation, no 